life just keeps on giving you more and more problems, right? Now that you know how to create a binary tree, the next question is, how do you go through all the values? With arrays, it was really simple, right? You had some indexing like 0, 1, 2. With stacks and queues, you had the push and pop operation. Even with linked lists, you had a next pointer and a previous pointer. So you could either go in the forward direction or you could go in the backward direction. But what about trees? Every node has a left child and a right child. So do you go left or do you go right? And once you reach a child node, once again, where do you go? Left or right? And how do you keep a track of all of it? This video shall answer all of those questions. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. Technically, there are three major ways to traverse a tree, a in-order traversal, a pre-order traversal, and a post-order traversal. Each of them have their different use cases. We will go step by step, and in this video, we will only cover the in-order traversal. We will go through an example and then do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this works. So without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly recall what do you mean by traversing a data structure. Traversing simply means going through all the values that are present in a data structure. For example, let us take up a single linked list. You have some values in it, right? Now, if you want to go over these values, you start from the head and you see the first value 4, right? If I print it, I will get 4 on my screen, correct? Now, if I have to go to the next value or if I have to traverse to the next value, what do I do? I do a next pointer and I would reach my next value that is 8. When I print it out on the screen, I will get 8 over here, correct? Similarly, what you can do is you can traverse this entire linked list using the next pointer. You will get 15 and then you will get 16 and ultimately null means you have to stop over there. Once you have traversed all these values, you will get 4, 8, 15 and ultimately 16 as your output, right? Similarly, let us take up a double linked list. Now, if you have to traverse this list, what do you do? You start from the head and you see a 1, correct? So you get 1 on the screen. Now, you can go in the next direction. To do that, you will take up the next pointer and reach the next value 2. Similarly, you can do a next again and reach the next value 3. So you have 1, 2, 3 on the screen. Now, since it is a double linked list, you can traverse in both the directions, right? You may want to go back. So what do you do? You do a previous and then once again, you will reach a previous value, correct? If you try to print it out, you will again get a 2 on the screen. So what we are doing over here is we are traversing this data structure. We are going through all the values. So now the question comes, what happens if you want to traverse a binary tree? You have this tree in front of you and I ask you, okay, go through all the values. What do you do? For a moment, you could be confused. Okay, where do I start from? A root looks like a good starting point. So I go through from two. And then what next? Which direction do you go? Do you go left? Do you go right? Let us say you are going in the left direction. So you may want to include all of these values, but in what order? And if you are going in the right direction, then you can go through all of these values. But once again, in what order? That is most important. And how do you keep a track of it? You can, however, say that you can go level by level when you are traversing a binary tree. For example, you can first look at this level. So you get two on the screen. Then you look at next level, so you get 4 and 8 on the screen. Then you look at the third level and you get 1, 3, 7. And ultimately, you get at the last level and you get 6 on the screen. This technique is known as level order traversal. And it comes in handy, but we will discuss it sometime in the future. First of all, let us focus on in order traversals. To get started with in-order traversal, first of all, you need to understand the basic structure of any node in a binary tree. You can safely conclude that every node in the binary tree would have some value. It would have a left child and it would have a right child, right? Even a complete tree, this value could be the root node. Then you could have a left subtree and then you could have a right subtree, right? So 
this is a kind of a recurring property that you will see throughout your entire tree. So you can say that basically a node looks like this. Correct? Now, given this node, an in-order traversal says that first of all, you need to look in the left direction. Then you go to your value. Then you read this value. And then you go towards the right value or the right node. Right? So this is the way in-order traversal works. First left, then the value, and then the right node. What this simply means is, let us say I have a tree like this. This is a binary tree, right? The node has two child nodes. So how do you do an in-order traversal of this tree? What you're going to do is, first of all, you read what's in the left, then you read the value, and then you go on to your right. So doing an in-order traversal of this tree will give you the value 2, 4, and 6. Now, you may ask a question that, hey, right now you only had one value in the left node and the right node. So you could easily write down 2 and 6. But what if you have complete trees as the left child and the right child? What do you do then? Let us look at one example to understand this concept even better. Okay, so let us try to take up an example of a general tree. You have this tree in front of you and we will try to perform an in-order traversal. All we know that is we first have to go in the left direction, then we have to look at the value and then we have to go towards the right child, right? But if you look at this tree, you have another tree itself in the left part, then you have a value, and then once again, you have another tree in the right child, right? So how do you go about doing this? Just go step by step. First of all, you have to look in the left direction, right? In the left direction, you have this complete tree. So what we're gonna do is, we will write this entire tree in our left direction. Correct? Next, we have this value. So, we will simply write down this value in our next column. So far, so good. Now, moving ahead, in the right direction, we have this another tree in front of us. So, what do you do? Once again, you will write this exact value in your right column. Now, since a binary tree has a recursive property, you need to keep applying the in-order traversal until you reach a single node. So you can see that we have reached a single node for the middle value. So we don't need to do anything over there. But for the left child and the right child, these are still trees in itself. So you again need to recursively apply in-order traversal on both of them. So starting with the left part, I will apply in-order traversal on this tree. When I apply in-order traversal, I will have a left, a value, and a right. When you traverse this, you will have 3 in the left, then you will have the value 8, and then you will have the value 7. Correct? So the in-order traversal of this part would be 3 in the left, then 8, and then ultimately 7. These are single nodes, right? So you can stop over here. We are still left with the right part, right? Once again, we will apply in-order traversal on this. So an in-order traversal again means we have a left, a value, and a right. Doing an in-order traversal, you can see that we don't have anything in the left child, right? Next, you have the value 4. So I will simply write down 4 in my value. And looking at the right child, you have 1 and 6. Now, this is again a tree. So, what choice do we have? We will again write down 1 and 6 in here. Correct? This is again a tree. So, once again, we will apply in-order traversal on it. So, we will again have 3 values, left, value and a right. Now, if you apply in-order traversal on this part, you will have 6 as the left, then you will have the value, and then you don't have anything in the right. So now you can see that all of these values have reached a single node, correct? And then you stop. So if someone now asks you, what is the in-order traversal of this binary tree? This is how you will traverse it. 3, 8, 7, 2, and then 4, and then 6, and then 1. Thus, your answer would be 3, 8, 7, 2, 
4, 6 and ultimately 1. And this is how you can perform an in-order traversal of a binary tree. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code so you can see how it's actually working. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement in-order traversal. And on the right, you will see it by an example. So, you pass in the root node as a parameter to your function. This root node is the starting point of your binary tree, right? Next, in a recursive function, we need to have a terminating condition, right? And if you remember from a previous example, as soon as we reached a single node or if we didn't have any further nodes, we stopped. That was the terminating condition. So next, what do you do? You have to go in order left, then the value and then right. So correct? If you look at the summary, we traverse to the left node, then we print out the value and then we go to the right node. So how does this work? You know that tree is a recurring data structure, right? So you need to apply in order traversal on the left subtree and on the right subtree. So this is what our next step is. We perform an in order traversal on the left of root. So when this method is called, I will call this function again with my left tree as the root node. What happens then? It will print this tree in a in order traversal. So when we print it out, we will get 3, 8 and 7. Correct? Now this function returns and I will print my value. So this will print out 2 on the screen. Correct? Next, what you do is you do an in order traversal of the right node. So we will be performing an in order traversal on this tree. And when you do an in order traversal on this tree, you will get the value 4, 6 and 1. As we saw in our last example. I hope. I was able to simplify how you can do an in-order traversal of a binary tree. As per my final thoughts, take a moment to realize and understand how we were able to use recursion to traverse through the entire tree. Each node in the tree will have the same property, right? Each node has a left child and a right child. And for an in-order traversal, you need to go in the way of left child, then the root and then the right child. And this property is repeated throughout the tree, right? And whenever you see any kind of repetition, recursion should be the first thing that comes to your mind. To get yourself more familiar with in-order traverses, I would recommend you to make some random examples of binary trees. Just get out a piece of paper, draw some of those trees and try doing an in-order traversal on your own. You will immediately get perfect with it. What unique cases of trees can you come up with? What problems did you face? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website to help you out with your programming needs. I am including a link in the description below in case you want to check it out. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. We have a lot more videos on trees coming up, so stay tuned.